Britons decide to pronounce it. Maybe the W, the V's are like W's. Maybe it's Whitbisk. Whitbisk? Vibisk? We're not sure if it's Vibisk or Whibisk. Whibisk, Whibisk. Whibisk. How, however. It's one of them. This, this engagement is uh, one day after the engagement at Ostromovo, which is also a rear guard action, um, and just approximately, and this is a rough approximation, about five miles-ish further east from Ostronovo and closer to Smolensk. In theory, the Russians were trying to, again, reunite, I guess it was the first and second Western armies um, with the mind of perhaps if they concentrated, they could uh, give battle. However, um, closely pursued by the French, and so set up another rear guard action here, close, what we should say, the, it's called the Battle of Vitbisk, but in theory, Vitbisk is some distance, a few miles further to the east uh, from this position here. Um, but I guess it's the French who gave it the name of the battle, I'm not quite sure. Um, but they made their stand. Again, to delay the French, to give them time to reunite uh, the two Western armies. What we have here is um, some rolling terrain, uh, some forest, which is dense terrain, ridges on which or behind which uh, Russians will deploy, a river, don't recall the name of it right now, but it's impassable terrain. So, I mean, that's the kind of the end of the table, and then we'll have to look up kind of a tributary flowing in, and also not necessarily a tributary, but you know, a small water course going through the woods here, all of which will have some impact on movement, of course. And uh, a bit of patchy swampland. I have a feeling that this kind of this area of the table was probably some low ground that if it extended this way, it would probably be more swampy and uh, forested area. So the battle's constrained into this area again. So regardless of the number of troops, you have to figure out how to deploy them effectively to meet your victory conditions. Mm -hmm. This starts at 10 o'clock, and theoretically, but probably will not, um, could last till 2100. So that's 34 turns. Wow. However, at a certain point in the game, and the Russian player will have to make the rolls on this since we don't have a host, um, there's a uh, die roll threshold for the French side to say, you know what, um, we don't have enough troops here to draw them into a major engagement, so we're going to stop our advance until more troops come up. And then if that roll is made, then the game stops at that point. Nice. Okay. And the troops you said were pretty much the same as last time. Very much. Um, they are the same units that were at Ostronovo for the, for the French with um, the addition of another division from Eugene's 4th Corps. Um, the cavalry is almost identical. The Russian forces are very much the same too with the addition of a division, um, I believe the name of the general was uh, Tukov, and then some additional cavalry squadrons were uh, dispatched, because there's a core cavalry leader there now called uh, Palin, or Palin. Um, mm. 
The interesting things uh, for this particular engagement um, for the Russians, and we'll have to look closely at how that impacts your command, is Tukov apparently was dispatched by the army commander, I think it was Barclay de Tolly at that time, to um, take charge of the rear guard, take over from um, the, the guy you were playing was last it time. Was it Revnevsky? No, no. I don't remember now. I think now. you uh, were working with Osterman Tolstoy oh, at uh, Ostranovo. But anyway, hmm. um, apparently Tukov shows up and really doesn't take charge. Uh, and Osterman um, it, it was always kind of the guy who would easily get his feelings hurt if he thinks he was slighted. And um, he's still on the field of battle, but he, he apparently, you know, doesn't do too much either as far as taking, taking over. And fortunately for the Russians historically, the divisional commander who was added, I think it was the 3rd Infantry Division from the 3rd Infantry Corps, I think, if I'm not looking at the uh, data sheet. Um, I think his name was Kono Vitsin. Um, well, actually, he was a pretty good divisional commander. And the Corps Cavalry commander who was there, Phelan, um, those two coordinated very well together and actually um, accomplished the goals of the Russians by delaying the French this engagement, at least historically. Um, so the two infantry corps commanders, uh, Tukov and uh, Osterman Tolstoy, were kind of non-entities as far as the actual battle, actual battle was concerned. And our battle here, um, you know, they're on the table, they're, they're, they're on the field, it's almost like you have some extra high-level uh, core leaders which you can use to take personal command if you so desired and maybe influence some die rolls that way. But it's unlikely Osterman Tolstoy is going to go anywhere and, and do anything with uh, Tukov's core. And the Tukov is mm. not going to do anything with Osterman <clears throat> Tolstoy and... We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, if I'm lucky, I won't have to move again. So we'll see. All right, that's good. We're going to go now and, and pause here and take some time to deploy to the table. And then we'll be back when we start doing something more meaningful to show you. So just a quick look at the Russian deployment. So um, without having memorized which divisions are which, but we have a division here. Now, the thing is with the Russians, there's three force commanders. So... What we've done is we've said the overall army commander who is not on the table has given an order of defend this ridge. And the idea is the French are coming because they're trying to eliminate as many Russians and we're trying to hold as long as we can. So I've got the cavalry here. Historically, the deployment was all the cavalry was over here on the south side. This is the north side of the board. So the cavalry was deployed here, which would give them a nice open bit of stretch to run and move but I'm going to head and anchored it with the infantry and then the cavalry because they're more mobile I figured they could as needed and then as a second line of defense here the rest of the troops deployed on the back and I've got the cavalry com or not cavalry I've got the artillery committed but not unlimbered they're limbered so they're up front that way if I want to move them or decide where to put them based on how the French are coming We'll see how that goes. And then by um, the deployment, having them this way, as, as my Russians up here start to fall back, then I have a second line. Uh, probably what I should do, I wanted the force commander up there, but have a, let's put some artillery there, just spread it out a little bit better. But that way, as I need to, I can commit and actually uh, unlimber the artillery and have them in place to... You know, depending on how people come over the hill. But if they want to get their objective, and that is to destroy like three quarters of the, the Russian army, they're going to have to come over the hill 
and then I'm going to have, you know, artillery. I think what I'll do is put two, just kind of trying to finalize some deployment here, but we're going to have lots of people waiting for when he has to come over the hill. So we're just going to shift. And I think I'll put a couple guns here in the middle. So we'll have guns flanking, and then we'll have artillery centralized to turn and shift as needed. Force commander, he can move if he needs to. But we're giving the, the ridges. So this ridge here, and if the force commander is on this ridge, that superior vantage point, and they were saying that little hill over there, if there's a French commander over there, then he would have superior vantage point for things that are in range for that. But that's going to be the basic deployment. And then the, the trick for Tom will be now, it's always a trick. Knowing when to deploy is always a trick. This, this right here is theoretically the edge of the table. So his troops are right there on the edge ready to come on. So it just depends on how far up he wants to move before he starts to deploy so we can start doing whatever needs to be done. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but that's the initial, initial board layout. So we'll start from there and we'll come back if there's a combat or anything fun. Otherwise, we're gonna just kinda play through and we'll see you on the next little spot. Four. Just a quick behind the scenes as we maneuver Tom's troops. This is now turn three. I think we're in turn three right now. Yep, turn three. And um, while well, he's got a lot to move. Yeah, he just finished his deployment. So we've taken, he's taken three turns to get up here. First turn was just kind of planning what he wanted to do. And then the second turn was moving. So cavalry has advanced and started to deploy. Um, I think he got all of this group deployed. That one, is all your cavalry deployed now? All the cavalry is now deployed, yep. Cavalry is now deployed, but he wants to clean up their lines because they look atrocious. Infantry is still deploying, so they are coming up to this bridge. I don't know how much wider they're going to get because he probably wants to take advantage of the bridge to cross the dense water obstacle. Otherwise, they have to stop at the water cross and stop and then unless advance they're unless they're lights unless they're lights but i haven't looked at the light but i don't know what he's got um but either way he I, they're not all lights so he's gonna have to decide how best to cross but he still has a lot of infantry to deploy so the thing is the optional scenario rule was he could have subtracted two hours worth of time that was like eight turns or something like that and <laughs> six turns and he could have come onto the board deployed, but then maneuvering deployed units through woods and stuff is its own challenge. Plus, I get to start making rolls to see if Napoleon recalls the troops. So at, uh, I think, turn 10. So if he had come on deployed, that would have just gave him a few turns to try and dislodge the Russians. So he's taking a chance by doing the deployment himself manually, if you will. But now you can see the challenge here, and this is the interesting part of the game, is when and where to deploy. So he's now deploying on the far side of the woods, however, he's not in any kind of combat position. If he gets close enough, which I don't know how close he will get, but I could have my cavalry swing into action and attack his folks while they're deploying. But he's not close enough for that because they're all in the defend. Um, plus their army objectives and whatnot are to defend the ridge line, so he really has no reason to move forward. But as you can see, he still has a lot of infantry. So it will still take him a few turns before he's in any kind of ability to fight with the infantry and really pull them up. Now his cavalry, on the other hand, if he can get them into some kind of lines now that they're deployed he can shift them around based on their order and whatnot he could attack and you know we'll see what happens there it'd be interesting but yeah this is the early stages of his deployment and getting troops on the board so it is just you know that um i've always found it fascinating that a lot of games since they come to the table deployed 
this is the part of the Napoleonics you don't always get to see. How did they get the men there and into those positions to then start fighting the battle? So it's very cool to see how that unfolds. Now, because my folks were in the defense, they already started deployed, so I didn't have to deal with that this turn. But as you can see, there are some command challenges for Tom as he's got to figure out how to make everybody fit. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, just wanted to do a quick little drop by and show you the uh, in-progress deployment here in our first couple turns. Thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. There is an order conversion, but it really has no impact. Oh, okay. Now, I believe you did the measure. They were on a move. Yeah. And they were within 12. Yes. Should have been smart and stopped them and not gotten so close. But, I mean, they're there. So, right. they convert to a D. Okay. Right they were convert to a D. They were on a move before. Okay. Now That's on, fine. Now, now they're on a. They're on a D. D. They convert to a D at that order conversion. All right. So here's a quick summary at the end of turn four. So the long column of infantry continues to move up. However, um, I would say now they're kind of roadblocked it right there past the river. But he can't really get too much closer without running into. I mean, like my cavalry could go, but I'm gonna. I'm just gonna hold the cavalry just a little bit longer. What I did do though was this, uh, we had 12 guns, which put a point of fatigue on that group of infantry there. Um, I did pull this group of infantry back off the hill, the ridge line there, because he's got some um, artillery that was placed right there. And the problem is being out of range of his artillery, they would just be taking fatigue. So we went ahead and pulled back. So we're good there. Um, his cavalry is still there. So really at this, this beginning part, it's just kind of the initial eyeing each other to see what we should do. I did think about charging with the cavalry, uh, which probably would have been okay, probably would have been a good idea, because then I could have just attacked like the front line, and he doesn't have a whole lot of frontage to fight with, so I probably could have won some of those fights. Hard to say, but him, again, moving things up and then straightening the lines will take him a little while. So I can still pepper them with some artillery here and there, but we'll see. Um, I've got some ideas to do, and we'll just see how it plays out. It might not go historically correct, but I'm just counting on the fact that it's turn four, and he still has a bulk of his troops, literally going back miles of, of terrain and whatnot he has to pass. And now that that group is stuck there, He'll have to deploy and then cross the river. So really I'm hoping on time so then I can start rolling to see if uh, Napoleon calls them back. But we'll see. It's hard to say. It's still very early in the game. That's, an, that's what we looked like right at this moment in time as far as deployments and where we are across from each other. We'll be back for more. All right, just a quick in the middle of the action. His cavalry, which was over there where the finger was, came forward. And then what I did was I countercharged with some cavalry that was up here. Thus, in the middle, they kind of met. Um, I've got two formations worth of cavalry there, and he's got one single formation worth of cavalry. So the good news for that for me is my first set of formation is done fighting, and they took four fatigue, and they've got... Um, um, that was pretty much it. They got pushed back a little bit for fatigue. However, he's got two fatigue on that formation. Since he's got one, he now has a penalty, but he's now hitting my fresh. He still has a slight advantage. So I'm coming in at a seven, and he's coming in with a plus eight. So we're going to roll off from there. But I thought I'd get a mid-action so you can kind of see what we're working on right now, and we'll come back when the results are all done. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so here's, here's where we were. The, the field is cleared. Now the difference is um, Tom still has his group here with eight fatigue. eight fatigue. So they didn't quite break yet, um, but if I could put a little more pressure on them with, say, artillery, but he fell back outside artillery range because on the um, status check, he had to fall back 12 inches, so he is outside my artillery range. Um, with that said, I did lose my two smaller formations, but the good news is 
These are my heavy guys. So these have shock and things like that. So these guys are still good to go. Um, but he would have to, because right now they're in retreat. So he'll have to take like personal command and then start kicking people out to try and bleed off some fatigue. So they, in the long run, will still be on the table, but just not as strong. But he still has a full group of cavalry over there, and I don't know what kind of units they are. I didn't ask. Will that be a surprise? But otherwise, we've held the ridge. And since the whole point is to... Well, so here's one bad thing. Uh, we've decided to interpret the... I've got four force commanders. If I lose three of them... Well, you got... Well, I got two you got infantry. Three force commanders. Oh, three force commanders, right? But what, were, what did we decide we were going to do? You got four. I have to lose total, three you have total, force. I think you have four total formations. Something, but yeah, uh, formation. Yeah. Formation. Formation. And what was a formation? Yeah. What was? Okay. So what we're saying it's is. Still kind of a formation. Yeah. Well, and that little artillery, we won't count him because he's so small. But as far as losing three. Three out of four formations. If I lose, I figured, if I lose all the cavalry, that gives him one in the bag. So, I'm, But they're still there, so that's good. Um, and so actually, I'm still holding out pretty good. So of the 30 turns we have to play, we're now on turn, well, whatever, about uh, to start we just, turns. We just finished five, so we're going to turn we're six. We're going to be on turn six. So yeah, um, you know, we'll be at this one for a little while, but... Not too shabby. The Russians are still holding. And, well, let's see. Tom, so the optional rule was that you would take, lose two hours of game time and come onto the table deployed. Wasn't that the yeah. optional rule? Mm -hmm. That was the option. The French that was the option. Take. And we've hit that hours, point. Use six turns and come on deployed. Now we've hit that. Well, well actually, we're about we're to do six. six. So what do you think? Good choice for you to do the manual deploy because you still have all of that, or are you okay going the, the route you did? So far, I'm okay with it. I think the uh, cavalry did, has, has done some good work so far. Yeah. Now, the other decision I made may not be so great because remember when I um, decided I was going to put them on support to support that infantry. Right. Well, now they're on retreat. Yeah. And, well, they got to move back. I mean, they're outside the 12, so in theory, they're okay. But oh. I said I was going to put them on support of, of this them. guy's support to have a string. And now, well, they can't move forward of them. They're, I'm going to have to issue a different order. Yeah. Well, and, and an order conversion, I can convert to something I'm... Calvary can convert to anything. Something. I mean, I'll be doing conversion to something. Right. Yeah, so it's not so bad. Plus, I was thinking, too, if you did come onto the table deployed, um, they don't move as far when they're deployed. So I don't know. I don't know. This looks like it's a bottleneck. But even if you came onto the table deployed, I still don't know how effective that would be. Because you would be moving up and around forests, or everybody would be... I don't know. Well, the other thing I had mentioned is changing their order to something. And I yeah. told you I wasn't going to do it last turn. I said, so no, I think I'll wait. I mean, because they're sitting there and defend right now because they, I guess they got within 12 inches because you were shooting artillery. Yep. So, yeah, they, they got within 12 and they did a convert to, right. to defend because they got within... And so it's allowing them time right now on defend to deploy out more units. They're almost completely done doing that deployment. But once they once they're done, I mean, I'm going to have to change them. Yep. I can't move forward from here mm -hmm. on a defender order. Yeah, and then. Yeah, well, it's it's going to be squeezing. They, they'll have to push forward to get out of the way if the other people want to deploy across the bridge. The other thing I did do intentionally is after seeing some feedback, um, 
and comments on some of your video is when I did start deploying out, I made sure I deployed out where I have a little bit refu a little bit of refusing the flank mm -hmm. so it wouldn't allow you enough moves to come yes. into the side of the flank. Because I had thought of that at one point, but had I if I thought about that, but I should have started that from the get go. I, I because now because um, I think clearly no matter where they go, there's no real good angle to come at you. Because um, I thought about that, but I was actually thinking of playing the deep game, and I could have brought some around here and tried to come, but that's like on the table edge, so I don't think I could have got there. I'd have to somehow put an order to come down here somewhere and then come up through this. But that'd be a lot of sending orders out, you know, to get them to wheel around because um, if I did an attack, I'd have to come straight across. And if I did a move, I'd have, still have to come down that road to get across this river. So I'd actually have to do possibly two orders. One order would have brought them over here, and then from here, I could have cut across. But again, to have had that actually be effective, I think I should have started that much earlier. Like if I was going to be that aggressive, I was just on the mindset of defending and holding back. So, who knows? Don't know, yep. Well, I tell you what, why don't we just back it all up and start over, and we'll try those alternatives we were talking about. Yeah. Nope, oh. he says no. All right, cool. See how this one plays out. <laughs> he says, let's play this one to the end. Uh, but actually, we're holding pretty good. And again, I'm still happy with the Russians holding out. Yes, we lost some cavalry, but again, I think we put a pretty good hurt on the cavalry he's got over there. So if I sneeze and push that artillery forward a little bit, I can start shelling his cavalry and make it so they never come back. All right, well, we'll be doing another game another day. So this will be a part one-ish to get us going. So thanks for tuning in.